Hello everybody and welcome back to Monster Prom. I am Sal, I'm the gamer who's bad at games. Here with the same guys doing the same thing with different characters, different names. I'm gonna skip this because we heard it all. This time, player one, it's also gonna be me, but I'll be the fire trick this time. Name, red, eh, pfft. custom name. I, I still gotta be me. Bap. Okay, who's player two this time? Doesn't okay, matter, well, guys. Everybody jump up. Yeah, I was gonna I'll say it gets shuffled around anyways. Come on. Yeah, I, I will since I. Uh, okay. Since I won, you know. Yeah, since you won. <laughs> okay, which which guy are you? Uh, I'll be uh, I'll be the green dude, I guess. Okay. Ugly guy. <laughs> According to uh, last episodes. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, look check out the results in the last episode. Anyways, all right, uh, who's Admiral. next? Admiral? Okay, yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be the guy with the, uh, Shoulder monkey. weird yeah. over his... He's like, a, he's like an ooze person, and that's like his little ooze buddy. I thought he was a shadow person. Yeah, he's either a shadow or an ooze, they don't really say. Reminds me of Peter Griffin when he had that... Uh, oh yeah, that little Pete. Win. Yeah, little Pete. <laughs> Okay, and so that leaves this being big country again. Franken bitch, this big seat here. Uh, the pronouns, thank you, are good. <laughs> I guess not. Yeah. Well, I forgot the pronouns for everybody, so you got the default. That's fine. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll skip all of this again because it's the same intro. Okay, stupid pop quiz. It's the exact same. Okay, coolest mythological creature. Already not the same, and you lied to me. I trusted you. No, no, no. I meant the opening. The oh, okay. questions are always random. Which is the coolest mythological creature? This weird creature I drew when I was six, uh, and which is clearly super derivative from other mythological creatures, but it's super cool, and it's my OC and my spirit animal. Okay. Or a sphinx, uh, who's super turned up and ready to party, and she wraps all her riddles. She still kills you if you don't answer them correctly. She just wraps the riddles. Or the invisible hand of the free market. I like the Sphinx because they got a picture up in the corner, so I'm slightly biased. Set four. The invisible hand. Admiral. Uh, first one. And Big C. <laughs> if you guys didn't hear that, he was eeny, meeny, mining. Invisible hand of the free market. All right. Oh, uh, you guys got so free bad. money, apparently. If you had to have sex with an animal, which animal would it be? A great white shark? If I have to fuck an animal, let's at least make it a story worth telling. A swan. They're classy, plus it reminds me of that myth of Lita and the swan. So at least by bestiality standards, it has a certain chic appeal. Or a human being, because I'm the kind of douchebag who loves to find loopholes and stupid questions like this one. I mean, normally I'd say this one, but I think this the swan. So for C4. The great white shark. All right, Admiral. I'm doing the shark too. Big C. Three for three, great white shark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what would be your dream first date? A professional meeting where you charm your date with some astonishing business advice, an art exhibition experimental enough to give you a seizure, a lovely walk in the forest after rescuing a date from a dragon, crimes, a wild party in international waters, or a sweaty and manly wrestling match. Uh, for me, it's art exhibition, C4. Um, let's go with, <laughs> let's go with, uh, shit. Let's just I don't go think with shit a. was an option. <laughs> yeah. Admiral? Yeah. Oh, I'm all about the sweaty, manly wrestling match. <laughs> Big C. <laughs> I'm fighting a dragon. You've slayed so many dragons. Should be, yep. uh, knighted by Sean Connery. Yep. That's a direct quote, guys. I wasn't pulling that out my ass. Anyways, I'm going... Ooh. Let's see. Well, I have no boldness, apparently. Actually, all of our stat spreads are fairly even this time. Huh. Uh, I'm gonna go to... I went to the library first last time, didn't I? I'm gonna go to the gym. That day, an epic dodgeball match. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit, leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural-born leader. You gain plus two charm. 
Later, you see Liam beaming to himself. Liam beaming? It appears that my application to write for Virtue magazine was received and accepted. I knew my pitch would hook them. Imagine the edgiest, most irrelevant article subject you can think of. Now double it. That's my article subject. You see, I used a writing technique on them called lying. It's very effective. Up until they call your bluff. Now I've got to actually write an article, and I've got no idea what to write. You! Save me from the consequences of my actions. Suggest an idea that lives up to my own hype. Uh, a passionate argument for the legalization of recreational chimera toxins or a chilling expose of the pasta industry's griffin trafficking. I'm going to go with that one. Yeah. Well, of course I don't condone the suffering of innocent magical creatures, but griffin pasta is delicious. So delicious. I simply don't think I could give up the taste of griffin pasta for anything, regardless of the cruelty involved. And I would hate to make a hypocrite of myself. If I don't have my integrity, what do I have? Other than my impeccable taste in art, music, and fashion. Liam does have pretty impeccable taste. How foolish am I to stoop to uh, asking you? You lose negative two charm, negative one smarts. I'm off to a good start. C4. Let's, uh, let's go to the, the library. Let's all go to the library. Let's all go to, uh, that day you spent some time on the library's PCs mining bitcoins. It's supposed to have something to do with solving algorithms and the rise of cryptocurrency, but you guess that nobody actually has any fucking idea how it works. Anyways, you gain plus two bitcoins equal to two million dollars, which unfortunately equals to two monster dollars, so plus two money. As you survey the library, you notice Vera, whose snakes are hissing and spitting as she glares at her computer monitor. This shit is getting so, so, so old. Every time I go on the Dark Arts forum, I have to deal with the sexiest, the sexiest trolls. I almost said sexiest trolls. Trying to call me out and prove that I'm a fake Dark Arts girl. Oh yeah, you like Lich King so much? Name three of their earliest curses. You probably just take pictures of yourself with cursed artifacts to get attention. As if I can't oh, I want to murder people in obscure occult ways just because I'm female. Please. I'm so sick of dealing with this sexist bullshit when all I want to do is use magic to make people suffer. I don't even know what to do. So, you should write a heated essay dec uh, decrying sexism, an essay so heated it melts the eyeballs of it off of anybody who reads it, or you don't need to prove your love of dark arts, just go out and enjoy them. Also, uh, also I should totally come with you. Uh, let's go with the first one. That is an excellent idea. I can start by giving background context by talking about Runegate, and when that siren published a book of runes and everyone got way too obsessed with looking into the lives of all the men she's drowned, and then go on to explain that this is what women in the dark arts face every day and that no one believes we can use curses, and that's where I'll lay on, uh, in the curse that will melt everyone's eyeballs out. I think I'll start by talking about how hard women work to be taken seriously while draining the pigment from their irises, then I'll move on to explaining how damaging sexist attitudes are while having the flames consume their pupils. Quick as a fierce feminine, a feminist flash, Vera has published her essay online. It goes viral with, with literal impossible speed. An essay that literally melted my eyeballs out, so painful and so dark artsy. This gal really knows her stuff, writes one chupacabra. I will never see a woman as unworthy of the dark arts ever again, uh, says the formerly sexist sea serpent. I will never see women at all. I will never see any anything. I have no eyeballs. Woke guy writes a lich because he's blind now and can't see the keyboard, which you assume means I may have lost my vision, but I gained a new perspective. Wow, I had no idea how many minds I could actually change just with my writing. It's like they say, have the serenity to accept the things you can't change, the courage to change the things you can, and the wisdom to know when to melt some sexist assholes' eyes out of their faces. Look, Buzzfeasting on Grains published an article about the 10 most savage points in my essay and also how to make your corneas stop melting out of your face. Let's read it together. Aw, oh, the friends who melt people's eyeballs together go to prom together? That's a saying, right? Whatever. Plus two boldness, plus one fun of yours. Yeah. Jesus, that was hard to read. Okay. So. Admiral. Yeah, I'm gonna go to class. Classy guy. 
Uh, you listen to your elders, learn valuable lessons. Sometimes the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, uh, uh, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. You gain plus two smarts. There you are, swiping through potential monster match dates when you spot Scott pacing and muttering to himself in distress. You can't bear to see someone so adorable in so much pain, so you might as well try to ease it however you can. Oh, hi there, Admiral. Do you think I'm adorable? Yes, in fact, you were literally just thinking that. Anyway, the other day I was out in the forest trying to find a quiet place and a large branch to do some pull-ups before the big sports game. When suddenly I was approached by all these talking forest animals. They were pretty big for forest animals, and I'd never seen animals that can talk like that. I mean, other than us werewolves, if you're counting us as animals. And they were just so fuzzy and adorable. But they said they were impressed by my pull-ups and my muscles and that I was even more adorable. So the nice little force animals with giant heads made me their king. Which was really, really flattering. I just don't know how... I just don't know anything about ruling. I'm not sure if I'm good enough to be a king. Ah, poor Scott. It's up to you to help him rally. Scott, a good king is a strong ruler, physically strong. If you can do a hundred push-ups, you can be a good king for sure. Or true royalty has been inside you all along. Why else would your eyes be royal blue? Oh, you like my eyes? Oh, man. There's, like, n no win here in this. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serenading him either way. Oh, man. Tell oh. me my eyes are nice. Yeah, let's go with the eyes. Oh, God. <laughs> My eyes are royal blue. Liam said they were cerulean. But I always knew that wasn't a real word. Clever Liam. He was clearly testing me. So if my eyes are royal blue because I had royalty inside of me all this time, does that mean I have, like, a little blue king or queen inside of me? Is the, it is like my true self. I always suspected such big muscles couldn't be of this world. So, good old Scott is just a mecca for the little blue person to fight against evil. It's like that scene from uh, Men in Black. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what my real royal name could be. Sir Beef Wellington? Lady McBeef? No, Lady Mac Muscles. I actually know a guy that goes by Sirloin of Beef online. <laughs> I, I should ask my loyal furries about that. Oh, God. Oh, please don't call them furries. That's inviting a whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> furries is what I've decided to call those giant furry talking forest animals for short. Uh, oh, no. Wait a minute. Thanks for helping me get my confidence back, Admiral. You should come meet my furry <laughs> friends sometime. Oh, oh Lord. God. He probably oh. already knows them. <laughs> oh. Well, you've always wanted to hang out with Scott. Not too sure about these circumstances, but it's better than not hanging out at all. You gain plus two smarts, plus one fun. All right, Big C. Uh, let's go with... Uh, one... Two... Bathrooms. <laughs> That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. What is she? Is this like a cheap thrill for her? I guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. You give zero shits and gain plus two boldness. Boop, boop. You notice Polly bent over her phone while Miranda tries to peek over her shoulder. Something really interesting must be going on on Polly's phone. When you get closer though, you see that Polly is just on a horny dating app again, swiping right on everybody. Miranda seems entranced though and a little worried. What? What did you say this was called again? And it's an app for finding true love? Um, sure. But, but I never knew. I spent countless hours going to royal balls and kissing frogs and pretending to be in the magical slumber when I could simply have been using this app. I mostly just use it for collecting dick pics. <laughs> what are these dick pics? Tokens of affection? Oh, alas, to be so far behind in my quest for love. I am 19 years old, practically an old maid, and only now learning of this? Oh, how will I ever make up for last time? Don't worry, I'll coach you in the mysterious uh, ways of the horny dating app. You'll have a whole harem in no time, or you still uh, you still don't have horny dating app. Why should you worry? 
or why should you worry having horny dating app when you can actually own a horny dating app? Why don't you just buy the entire company? I'll coach you. You would do that for me? Oh good, I have so many questions. What does DTF mean? <laughs> does that uh, does that muscular chest in this picture have a head attached? Or did this man take a picture like that to hide his handlessness? Why do so many of the profiles use the eggplant emoji? <laughs> I shall appoint you my royal advisor in the charge of the horny dating app adventures. Your first ta task will be to take some very hot selfies of me. You're not sure Miranda knows what a selfie means, but you're not complaining. You get plus two charm, plus one smarts. Oh, yeah. Choose an object. Um, Xbox controller. Toilet. Den Dental floss. Toilet paper. Okay. <laughs> Player order is decided based on how... Right? how good the selected object would be as your only weapon in battle royale situation. So we got a toilet, toilet paper, an Xbox controller, and what was yours, Big C? Uh, dental floss. Dental floss. <laughs> um, At least you could joke a bitch out with mine. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's like a toilet would be unwieldy, but would technically do the most damage if you could wield it. <laughs> yeah, crush somebody with it. Yeah. So I want to give it to Toilet. Anybody disagree? <laughs> no. No. Go ahead. Okay, so then we got Xbox controller, toilet paper, or dental floss. I yeah, feel like toilet paper is last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. But probably. What was yours again? Oh, I got Xbox well, controller. Either that or dental floss for sure. One I'll go with two. Xbox controller. Uh, cause it's already got a cord on it, whereas the dental floss you'll have to like weave into like a military cord or something. <laughs> I think that makes the most sense. Alright, lunchtime number one. C4, where are you sitting? Right, um... Bottom left. Bottom left. You find Vera sitting in front of a pile of money instead of food, as usual. Damien comes over and drops his own money pile on the table and also some organs. Huh, not bad, but I prefer to exert a little less effort for my income. A dejected swamp creature slumps over to the table and adds some money to Vera's pile. You want to voice this one this time, C4? No, I don't feel like reading. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Admiral or Big C, do you want a second character? I have a lot of characters. Uh, yeah, don't everybody yeah. jump at once. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Income. You mean this stuff? This is just what people throw at me to get me to stop punching them. And this is what people throw at me to keep them from revealing what kind of porn they're into. But I agree, the money's only secondary. The frowns on their faces are their own reward. Still, I'm always looking to improve efficiency. Have you tried developing business car uh, contacts in hell? Your victims would be even more terrified if they know death won't save them. Yeah, but that doesn't work on the undead. For those, you need a priest. A priest? You know how my family feels about priests. Ugh, I'm sick of terrifying, terrorizing people one at a time. There's gotta be a way to terrorize everybody in the cafeteria at once. And make money at the same time. I'm sure there is. That is, after all, the essence of capitalism. So set the building on fire and charge an exit fee, or trick everyone in the cafeteria into having an orgy, then film it, blackmail in bulk. Uh. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with the second one. The second one? Simple, elegant, raunchy. I like your style. But how are you gonna trick a whole room of people into having an orgy? Don't tell me you don't know how to do that. Is this, is this something you do all the time? Is this something you don't do all the time? I thought you were a prince of hell. Yeah, but I'm a prince of the burny part of hell, not the sexy part of hell. That explains it. Well, to answer your question, this is a room full of high schoolers. A slight breeze could instigate an orgy. Although the succubus sauce I snuck into the Sloppy Joes it won't hurt either. It certainly doesn't. You, Vera, Damien, retreat to a safe distance to film the sexy carnage and avoid the fluids. Gross. Alright, um... That one. Yeah. 
<laughs> the table you chose is quite crowded. Liam sits across from Miranda, who's flanked by two well-dressed servants. One of the servants cuts a slice of Salisbury steak and feeds it to the other. Seriously, Miranda? You have servants to chew your food for you? What? Of course not. That would be barbaric. The servant happily swallows the Salisbury steak. I have servants to eat for me. They're called eating serfs. Don't you have any? First of all, no, I don't eat food. Second of all, that totally defeats the purpose of eating. Aren't you worried about starving? Why would I be? My serfs get all the calories I need to stay fit and healthy. Ugh. I have no objective reason to care about this, but suddenly it's all I care about. Someone convince Miranda to stop this madness. Maybe you should start with the madness, uh, Liam. Imagine all the food you could take pictures of oh, oh, without having to eat any of it. Or, but Miranda, look the con at the contented smile on the servant's face. You think he's eating for you, but secretly he's eating for himself. I'm gonna go with that one. You might have a point there. For too long, I have needlessly ordered off the cafeteria menu, leaving my food untouched even as I take the most artistic grams. I justified the wastefulness by the intense artistic merits of my photographs, but I need compromise no longer. Finally, I can have my cake and pay someone else to eat it too. <laughs> Still, Miranda, this makes way less sense for someone who actually needs to eat to survive. Oh, you're just jealous of how cute my surfs are. You have little guys. I'm not full yet. Seriously, how does Miranda keep from starving to death? Do they put an IV in her while she sleeps? Whatever, she's happy. Big C. How much moolah do I have? You I got seven. seven. I want to go see the cat, bitch. Aw, oh, you missed me and my shit, huh? Don't worry no more. All this shit can be yours if you have the money. Not me, though. <gasps> hey, look, it's the sheet again. Ooh. There's also this one. <laughs> it's a corpse. Yeah, I'm selling a corpse. It's like some kind of fashion accessory. It's not like I'm trying to dispose of it. Or oh, there's the also smut. the dragon oh. heat. Yeah. Okay, give me the smut. Have a good yeah. one. A good oh, what? Boy. Fap? <laughs> okay, Admiral, oh, you got the uh, the coven or wolf guy and ghost. Uh, ghost check. You approach Scott and Polly's table to find the coach behind a, t a pile of jelly desserts plotting. Thank bros if you're here, bro. Come on, join our huddle. Maybe you're curious about our huge pile of jelly jam gelatinous dirt dessert cups? Well, wonder no more. We're going for the jelly prize. Yeah, we're going to win it. If we collect the foil cover of 100 jelly desserts, we will be the lucky winners of... One free jelly dessert! Ah! But right now, we're stuck. We only got 99. That means we need... We need... One more, Scott. We need one more. We need one more. You'd give them your jelly dessert, but you already threw it at a bird person you hate. I guess you gotta make a choice. Steal the final jelly dessert from the jelly dessert factory, or make like a puppy dog and beg. All things are sweeter when achieved through pity. Oh, uh, I'm gonna steal the dessert. But isn't stealing wrong? No, Scott, that's a myth, like hangovers and the afterlife. But if the afterlife isn't real, why are you a ghost? There's no time for metaphysics, Scott. We've got a heist to plan. No, Coach says stealing is wrong. Unless you are stealing a ball or a base or a victory from the jaws of defeat. Actually, it seems like sports is mostly about stealing. Well, that settles it. Time for stealing. One fake bus, one real woolly mammoth, and a brutal running gun battle later, you finally secure, secure one illicit jelly cup, which you turn in along with your 99 other jelly cups for one free jelly cup. Scott is too upset by all the violence, so you split your free jelly cup with Polly. Worth it. Okay, everybody choose something cool. Um, Laser blaster. I'm going with something actually cool this time. Dinosaurs. Meat curtains. <laughs> <laughs> oh, engorged like 
obscenely engorged clitorises. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Player orders decided, based on how important it would be to bring the selected item to our first Mars colony. <laughs> okay, I think we need laser blasters. Yeah, yeah. I think they already have dinosaurs, so that's gotta be pretty low. Um, mate curtains and clitorises, guys, which is, which is more important. <laughs> All of important. <laughs> what did we agree? I mean, I mean, you're gonna need that on Mars, right? <laughs> uh, the clit. <laughs> the cl clit is more important than the curtains. There we go. <laughs> yeah, they made you say it out loud, Big C. It happened. <laughs> okay. Uh, so me first this time. Um, yeah. Well, rehearsing something uh, oral sex, same thing as last time. Performance intense and inspiring. Remembered for generations, pretty good by high school standards. Extra creativity. But Liam isn't paying attention to any of that. He corners you afterwards and lectures you on the moment Graham filters. What no one seems to understand about filters is that they're not about making pictures better. They're about making pictures browner and harder to see. That's why I use my own proprietary filter for almost all of my photos, Infinite Taupe. It's also probably why I have only six Momentgram followers, but we all must make sacrifices for our arts. In any case, I have to go. There's a dead rat in the parking lot. I simply must document. As soon as Liam's gone, Miranda peeks out of an air conditioning duct. Goodness, the situation's even more dire than I thought. If Operation Make Liam Popular Again is to succeed, we must get started immediately. What's that? Why, yes, of course you're part of my operation. I unwillingly force people into my service all the time. Oh, you want to know why it's called Operation Make Liam Popular Again? Well, he's been alive for like centuries, right? I'm sure he must have been popular at some point. I'll check his the history books later. There's no time now. Phase 1 is getting Liam more Momentgram followers. I took the liberty of having my royal spies discover the password to his account so we can give it a total makeover. But what to do? Use his account to post a bunch of porn and bomb recipes or pay a million homeless people to follow Liam on Momentgram. Um... <laughs> that wasn't so great. Oh yes, solving problems with money is my family specialty. Unfortunately, Father cancelled my royal credit cards after I had all those land ponies shipped to our underwater castle and they drowned. But I'm sure you have enough money to accomplish this feat. You totally don't. You decide to cut costs by hiring goats instead of people. But goats don't have thumbs or smartphones. So instead of having them follow Liam on Momentgram, you just have them follow him in real life. Uh, where did all these goats come from? Get them away from me. They ate my cashmere phone cozy. This is madness. Exit Liam pursued by ghosts. This uh, goats. This is a terrible idea, and also goats are pretty expensive. You lose two creativity and one money. Big oof, Admiral. Jim. Sorry, the get Jim. You said okay. Yeah. All right. So you're too poor for a lot of this, but you can get the present. Uh, Russian novel, glasses, motivational poster, the tampon, the tattoo, or the Latin accent? Uh, you know, I'll do the Bob Ross. Wow. Creativity. <clears throat> yeah, yep. looks like it gave oh, yeah. creativity, yeah. Alright, set four. Oh, let's go to the outdoors. Unce, 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 unce. Okay. <laughs> uh, someone summons uh, demons. Rad party. You gain plus two fun. Sleep. Afterwards, you discover you've been poisoned and only Vera has the antidote. She does this all the time. It's how she invites you to hang out. There you are. Thanks so much for coming. I'm embarking on a new criminal enterprise and I need a consigliere. The idea is simple yet brilliant. Think Uber, but for killing people. I call it murder. But it turns out the market is flooded with assassination apps, assassination apps, and blood. I need a way to get ahead of the pack, and since you're such a good advisor, 
So differentiate yourself by uh, being the only service that offers free range organic murders or viral marketing. Literally, tailor a highly contagious virus to make people love murder. Second one. You can do that? Great. You can use my private chemical weapons laboratory. And so, this is working better than I ever could have imagined. Demand for murder has gone through the roof since you released that virus. Sure, the side effects include vomiting, bloody tears, male lactation, cobra feet, time dilation, rigor mortis, rectal teeth, renegade spleen, microaggressions, sudden tattoos, hair trauma, liquefaction, and coughing. But it's well worth it for the profits I'm raking in. Plus, I'm making a literal killing, selling people the antidote for all those side effects. It's not an actual antidote, though. It's actually just heroin. Same difference. Did you know they used to give heroin to babies as a cost suppressant? Yeah, the real world is as exactly as amoral as this video game, but whatever, you gain plus two creativity, plus one money. <laughs> Big C. Uh, uh, I'm going to go to... Let's go to the library. Alright, video back. poker. Uh, paid off, so you get plus two money. There you Woo. go. You notice Miranda hunched over her phone, chewing on her lower lip. She seems nervous about something. You sidle over and ask what's up. Oh, my royal advisor! Thank Poseidon you're here! I am lost! My adventures in horny dating app have yielded a suitor, but he behaves like no suitor I've ever had before. He has not given me his full name and his family titles. He has not sent me an elephant laden with golden jewels. He has sent me only a single word. Hey. Hey? Hey? What does it mean? There's no punctuation, no capitalization, only three curious letters. H-E-Y. How can I possibly respond when I don't even know if his father's rich? Please, my loyal advisor, what should I write in response to this most cryptic of missives? Let's face it, Miranda, you're still not used to the dating complex uh, customs of hoarding dating app. Maybe you should try mimicking the natives. You should go with, hey, or Miri, whatever you meant by that. This is your opportunity to stay the higher ground. As the societal elite that you are, see his bat and raise it with a more refined hay. So hay with a lowercase h or uppercase, if that helps. More refined. What a truly excellent idea! I will match his coarse vernacular, but display my good breeding with capitalization and punctuation. He says, oh, how marvelous to have found a lady of manners on this debauched network. He's royalty as well. He says that his royal advisor told him to swear off capitalization so as to appear more relatable. But clearly, yours was the better advice. An elephant laden with gold and jewels is en route to this location as we speak. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, let's pretend like you meant for that to happen. You gain plus two creativity and plus two money as your share for getting the elephant thing. Woo! Oh, something happened to Admiral. He's totally not going to get revenge on C4 for last time. That weekend, you decide to take some rest from your very wacky day-to-day -day adventures and enjoy some re refined pleasures instead. So you go to an art exhibition with your most sophisticated friends, Vera, Liam, Miranda, Sit4, and Solemn. Ah, uh, the delicacies of pictorial... Oh, sorry, Admiral, I read your line. It's so nice. There are always a lot of things in... Or kings and queens and princesses. Yes, art is quite fine. I love how wicked it can get. The government is always trying to say movies and video games make people violent, but I think it's not fair. Art has always been way more violent for centuries before movies and video games were even created. Like, look at this one. This dude Saturn is totally eating his own baby. That's not nice. Here, let me practice one of my family's most beloved customs. Censorship! Miranda gets some crayons and colors over the painting, so Saturn is now eating a delicious sandwich. And voila! This is quite a nice Saturn of events. Not sure which is worse, you horribly desecrating a valuable piece of art or that terrible pun. But the owner of the exhibition seems quite uh, certain of which is worse. What have you done? You rascals have destroyed a classic piece of art worth millions! You'll have to pay me back for this by painting a new piece of art as good as that one was, and you can't leave until you've compensated me. Dang, how can you, a high schooler, paint something as good as this piece revered worldwide? Obviously by teaming up with one of your friends who, despite also being high schoolers, are at least very artsy high schoolers. But which one? Sit4 had a terrible vacuum cleaner accident last year and was forced to get a hand transplant, and word is he received Goya's actual hands? Or Solemn knows all kind of weird colors like Bordeaux, Marsala, and Turquoise, which means she's either a skilled artist or a douchebag smartass. Oh, it's gonna be sit for for this. 
<laughs> you and Sit4 start unleashing your art skills as if there was no tomorrow. Use more green. Make it more avant-garde. Add some flowers. The two of you do all that and more. In a matter of minutes, you've re replicated Saturn devouring his son, but now it's, like, way more cooler. You name it, Saturn devouring his son with a side of onion rings. <laughs> nice. Not bad. Majestic! It seemed we were finished, yet you orchestrated the ultimate comeback. A true renaissance. The exhibition owner comes back and is utterly astonished by your work. This is beyond words. It even makes me want to have some children of my on uh, my own in order to devour them. You're free to go, and I feel the need to give you five fifty thousand money for this beautiful piece. Huzzah! And so you invite everyone out for ice cream, which turns out to be kind of expensive. You and Sit Four only have plus three left over, but you had a great day. Ah, uh, so you gave him money instead of the turmoil he gave you last time. 